Are you guys ready for a fresh watch debate? Come see what episode two has in store. Hi, you guys. Awesome to see you. Hey. We're, we officially made the, the pass of episode one, so thank you guys for receiving it so well. I'm excited to get into, yeah, I'm excited to get into this topic. I think just awesome topics will keep this train going. So um, actually looking back to episode one, we discussed the best luxury watch. Justin, you brought a pretty strong case for the Speedmaster, yes. and you brought a really strong case for the date just. And it was really Two great watches, to hear yeah. how you guys kind of made your case known and respectfully like had some quality opinions. But outside of that, you guys weighed in and we love some of your feedback. So so if it's okay, I would love to share a neutral comment yeah. and then a comment in favor for everybody else. You want to see what you guys said? So as mentioned, some of our favorite comments. This one was from Gavin White, 9734. He said, the Speedmaster has an engaging history, is an absolute strap monster, is timeless and incredibly well-made. I think it shows slightly more knowledge than Rolex, the default mass market luxury watch. Omega Speedmaster will get a nod from watch enthusiasts, the Rolex from everyone else. Best solution? Buy both. But look, there's not just neutral comments. Ripley, you had some people in your corner. Oh, so, the correct people, yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the Bronco Hammer, he said, well done. I believe Rolex won that one. More versatile and can serve as a one watch collection. Well done, Bronco Hammer. You want to wear your watch in the water with me. I get that, yeah. <laughs> there you go. The one guy. Aww. Well, you are not wrong. Uh, you had a lot of support too for the Speedmaster, Justin. And Sire638 said, not even up for debate, Speedmaster for the win. So, mm. Unless Very you're wise, sorry, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Nonetheless, you understand how debates work. It's not just what we think. It's also very important to hear what you guys have to say. So um, this week's topic is a fun one. Before we get into it, I would love to do a wrist check with you guys. What are you wearing, Justin? Tudor Harrods hey. with the green bezel. Striking. <sighs> Such a good watch. Mm -hmm. I love this one. Um, this was one that I had liked, and then I kind of fell in love with it when I saw it in person. Um, great watch. I love this watch in general. This iteration with the green is uh, is very nice. Also very on topic. Oh um, yeah. We'll get to that. But yeah, green Harrods. I like the hands yeah, on that yeah. one. Big They're... fan of that one. It's like the vintage Kermit that never existed. Hey, exactly. that's a really yeah, fun very way nice. to package yeah. that. Um, what are you wearing, Ripley? Uh, well, the best green watch. I uh, got the memo and it's the palm dial shape chest with a smooth bezel and an oyster bracelet. It's this busy of a dial. Don't need that. Then. Your configuration is yes. on very point. Nice watch. Well, I didn't really fall in line with the memo today, so please don't come for me. But I do what I want. I'm wearing a vintage Omega cocktail with a really beautiful diamond bezel around this. That's nice. Grandma chic in all its glory. Yeah. Actually, legitimately reminds me of something my grandmother used to wear. Yeah. So um, that's just what we're wearing. Let us know what you guys have on while watching. It's always fun to see what you guys chose for the day. All right, if you've clicked into this video, you're already aware of what debate number two's topic is. So let me just lay it down. We're talking and we are crowning the ultimate green Rolex watch today. So yes, we're keeping it Rolex. We just know, look, it's their color. It's their brand color. So why not get into the variety of green watches that exist and make a case for the one that you guys enjoy the most. Um, you guys will get a chance to kind of share your positioning and some details behind it. I will give the other person a chance to rebuttal very briefly. As always, I stay neutral in this. I'm just here to make sure we have a quality conversation and then you guys get a chance to weigh in once our debate is over. So without further ado, who's ready to crown the ultimate green Rolex? I Ripley, am. I'll let you start. Okay. Man, can, before we start, can I just say this? Yes, there's so many good green Rolex. I'm not this trying year, to right? make this easy on and you. And also, guys. it's Don't not even Rolex kind of pigeonholed me. There's so many great green watches. I'm wearing one of them right now. I but I do have an answer for the best green Rolex. I'm sure Ripley does as well. Yes. So. Yes. Um, yeah, I appreciate I appreciate you guys always taking my requests for topics um, to heart. I'm sorry that it's challenging, but isn't that the point? It is. You guys, you guys is. delivered last time, so yeah. I'm very it's, excited to see. It's challenging, but at the same time, it's a really concise list because it, until re fairly recently, we didn't really have that many green Rolex Valid. watches. You know, you go back uh, pre 2000s, and it's like there's kind of the offhand, like the green Stella day date. Yeah. So it's really within the last handful of years, last decade, that we've seen green start to make its way into mm -hmm. the catalog on a much wider scale. Sure. So we have a lot of modern choices, but right. going back into history, it kind of tapers off. Yep, and a yeah. variety but of there greens. Are some some vintage that are in that category, mm -hmm. which is really nice. Like oh, you yeah. mentioned, the Stella Dials are a great contender Look, for this Look, I almost topic. lost my mind at the Beach Daytona, that the oh, green the Daytona version. Beach? Yeah. Oh man, that thing was mind blowing yeah. the first time I saw it. So anywho, again, I'm neutral in this one. I'm curious, Ripley, <clears throat> you, you don't have a set time today. I figure we'll let the conversation take whatever it needs. You'll get a chance to rebuttal very briefly and then you get to make the case for your watch. So 
you are ready, we'll go ahead and kick this one off with what is your ultimate green Rolex watch? So when I'm thinking about a green Rolex, I kind of want something that's true to the spirit of green in Rolex's catalog. And I feel like some of the modern watches are just almost a caricature of a green Rolex. Uh, there's just too much green. They like realized, oh, it's our company color and it's been absent from our catalog for most of our history. And let's make up for lost time and go hard with it. And so like, for me, like the green Oyster Perpetual, it's just a lot of green. The green and gold Daytona, it's a very loud watch. I want something that is green, not visibly like obviously green, like in your face about it, but is green. And that's kind of, you know, where we come to the palm dial. The watch, the green Rolex I actually purchased for myself. Um, this is your personal watch. Yeah, personal watch, and you can tell all the scratches and scuffs on it. This is, I well wear loved. it all over the place, been no around problem. the world and shows it. But it, it, this is a watch where, you know, you look at it from across the room, you can't really tell what color its dial is. You get it up close, it's a ton of fun and whimsy. You get a leafy green dial, but it's not a green watch overtly. It is green, but you don't need to wear it as a green watch. And with a Rolex, yeah, you can kind of want that novelty of a green watch like the Hulk or like the green and gold Daytona or like the OP, but you are buying very much a green watch at that point. Yeah. I think the beauty of some of the, like the, the original Kermit mm. is it's a touch of green. It's obvious green, but it's a watch that you can incorporate that green, the Rolex green into your regular everyday life without just being the green watch guy and having that clash with a different outfit. Mm -hmm. I wear this with all sorts of different things. It's not so green that I'm, you know, I feel like I have to plan an outfit around it. It's a ton of fun, but for me, this is it. But in general, I want a green Rolex that isn't so green. And this is coming from someone whose green is their favorite color. So I love yeah. green, but I don't want that green loud bezel. I don't want the full, full, bright, vibrant green mm -hmm. dial. This is kind of strikes a nice balance. And it's also so unexpected for Rolex that now that we're saturated with green dials, we've got, you can get a Daytona in solid gold and green. You can get a stainless steel three-handed OP in green. Well, choose something a bit different. I don't want a green dial. I want a green leafy dial. So here we go. This is that one. Plus, it's not a sports watch. It's not a dress watch. You can wear this with anything. It's not like a, a green Submariner where it's that's a very much a dive watch mm -hmm. in a bright color, very casual and sporty. So this is something you could wear with you know, yeah. a button-up shirt and it looks all right. But at the same time, it's a green fun watch. And if you're getting a green Rolex, you want a little bit of fun. So that's why this is the one for me. But if you don't like this, there are plenty of other ones. Yes, yeah. I remember when this first came out, you legitimately were in love with this. And I will speak to you, you do wear it pretty versatilely. It's not aggressive in any way, shape, or it's form from a color standpoint. It's the only Rolex, green or other, that I've, that's ever come out and that I've actually bothered my retailer mm -hmm. about. And it's the only new Rolex I've ever purchased from a retailer. So it, yeah, this one has a special place to me. And now that we've seen all these other green Rolexes come out mm -hmm. since, uh, this is still the one I would pick and still the one I wear. And that just kind of stands as a testament to I'm not sick of this. It wasn't a novelty purchase. It's been years. I still like it. I still own it. And I don't think that same statement would apply if I bought like the John Mayer Daytona where mm. it, it's a big green and gold watch. And once the novelty of that wears off, it's such its own thing that you can't, you know, I'd feel ridiculous wearing it in my daily life. Okay. Yeah. Point made. Thank you for bringing an honest perspective to this. Do you have any immediate responses? Um, it's a good watch. It you is. Like it. Yeah, yeah, I do like it. I think it's uh, it's, a, it's a really nice watch. He rocks I, I love it. Well. it. I, I, he does. He wears it well. Um, and got to give him credit for literally putting your money where your mouth is, right? <laughs> like the best green, and I'm gonna buy it. So. Um, yeah, definitely get some get some points for that. And, and again, it's a good choice. It's not a bad watch. Yeah. It's not the best green Rolex, yes. but it is a nice watch. All right. If you're so curious you on what it? the best green Rolex actually is, right. the Hulk Submariner. It's no secret with you. No. Um, we're talking green here. Ripley's <laughs> over there snickering like he's not wearing... The watch I use as the example of what I would <laughs> But I want to hear. I want to hear. This is it. I want green. I want... I want green. I don't want a little green. I, I like the Kermit a lot. The Kermit's a great watch. Mm -hmm. um, but we're talking best green. It's Rolex's color. That's the topic. I'm in. I'm not one that wants to like dip my toe in the water. We're, we're jumping in the deep end. And this one does it. I love it. Um, one, it's a Submariner. I love that it's a Submariner, right? I mean, it's just one of Rolex. Universally loved. Right, yes. It's like the sport watch from Rolex. Yeah, um, and also, it's 
it, it has some history and nostalgia to it, right? They mm -hmm. introduced the green on the 16610, the, the nickname Kermit version in 2003, right? To commemorate 50 years of the Submariner. This one came out in 2010, went to 2020, so it's now discontinued. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been updated, but this version with the green dial is discontinued. And that's another fact I like about it. If you want a green dial on a Submariner, this is what you get. Yeah. That's it. There's one. When you have a green dial Submariner, you know what it is, and it's this one. Um, and some people might think it's it's kind of loud and, and too much color, um, but I honestly think that that's more of a perception than a reality. Um, because yes, it's a sporty watch and it's a fun watch. Um, I'm not gonna wear it, you know, at you know a super formal black tie thing. Well, eh, I could probably get away with it, and you know, I'm, I'm gonna roll back on that statement already. I might do that. You never know. I might. <laughs> Good for you. Um, but it's you. You can wear it. It's versatile. It's not like a crazy color. I think people kind of feel like it is because it's. It's a lot of green, but it's really not. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you see it from across the room, you know what it is. Um, I just, I think it's a great watch. I think it's a great color. I think Rolex did it really well by making it a whole with the dial and bezel yeah. combo. My only complaint about the newer version and the Kermit is when it's the black dial and the green bezel, it almost feels like a little bit of an afterthought. Like they just yeah. put a bezel on a black watch. So I, I really enjoy the fact that the Rolex said, this is it, it's green, we're all in. Um, sport watch, Submariner, green, you want it? Hold my beer, yep. here you go. Yep. Um, so anyway, I think this is the best green Rolex. Like I said earlier, I, I love the palm dial, that's that's in my top choices as well as honestly uh, a, a lot of other watches. I think they're great. Again, green being my favorite color as well, like I kind of have a, a, a little affinity for a green watch. Um, but if I got a crown one, it's the Hulk. I think you get points for the uniformity between the bezel and the dial here. Like, yes, it can be very loud to some, but for some reason, these are, this is not all greens are created equally, and we'll get to that in a minute. But I do, I do give you points for that uniformity. We, you and I always kind of align on that monochromatic sort of feel of a watch where bezel and dial are not competing mm -hmm. for attention. And I think that this actually blends really well together. And that green is phenomenal. And to your point, one of one, I love that. There's not iteration on this where yet. you're really yet <laughs> okay yes yet this is everything's a yet three watches and wonders right I mean, we all said that about we all said that about the kermit and then we've got a ceramic true kermit. very true. That's true it was pretty surprising but great choice yeah. honestly not mad about it i'm curious about the kermit why, why we're talking about yeah. that the new the sermit i guess if i can you're allowed to say it, but we don't I, like it makes me feel bad but i'll say it anyway <laughs> um what's better was that an improvement over this one do they like the kind of throwback to the the old kermit or uh is the hulk a better version of the green submariner i think it's the hulk let I me like, know in the comments i like the hulk if i'm weighing in i think i love the old kermit i love that aluminum bezel i don't care me too it's my I favorite one, I, I don't feel good. like they're fighting for attention i feel like the bezel is its own and the dial is its own in that world yeah, yeah. whereas the sermit really starts to kind of try to blend but it's just and mm, at least the, the my, original kermit has the maxi dial so it kind of differentiates itself from the mm -hmm. you know the previous versions with the smaller loom plots mm -hmm. so personally i'm a big fan of the hulk mm -hmm. it's not the green rolex i would want and it certainly wouldn't be the Samariner I'd get. I mean, to be fair, I own a 30-something year old five-digit sub, but like it with a black dial and a faded blue bezel. So total opposite of the Hulk, but I do objectively like the Hulk. It's almost like getting the bright orange McLaren. It is a uh. loud choice. If it's if you have multiple cars and you've got many cars and you want the like the loud, bold green Rolex, that would probably be my one, you know, that would probably be mm -hmm. the one to go for. The sub quintessential Rolex, like the quintessential Rolex sports watch in Rolex's color, really pretty piece. I just, if someone gave me the Hulk, it wouldn't be my everyday watch in the same way this is. And with a Rolex, like Rolex excels at being an everyday watch. Right. And so for a steel Rolex, I want it to be, whether or not I do, I want it to be something that I can wear every single mm -hmm. day. And that for me, it's where, it's where limiting. the Hulk, it's just a little too limiting. In a vacuum, I love the Hulk. It's so it's cool. Green sunburst dial, super unique, super punchy. It is like the most green Rolex I can think of. And it's exactly for that reason why I wouldn't want it unless I had a bunch of other subs mm -hmm. and other things. That said, for the person who doesn't want this because it's not enough green or it's a little too pedestrian or a little too understated, it's go to the opposite side. Like if you're not wearing the dress shoes, get the colorful sneakers. You know sure. what I mean? It's like two total opposite things. So. On one hand, I I love that watch, and it's almost like apples and oranges, two sides right. of the same green coin. And it is. It's a, the uh, the palm dial is more versatile, right? It, yeah. it just is. It's a little more subtle. Um, and it, 
it has um, that quality, which I love in watches, where it's kind of cool and funky, but you don't notice it mm. immediately. Like from across the restaurant, I'm not noticing that palm dial coming no. in. We're like, I'm noticing this. It's like I can tell that guy's got a sub, like you know, across the, the stadium, light. pretty much. As soon and as then, you catch it, it's not a black dial. It's also dial. what yes. does the watch say about you? A lot of people like mm. the green sub because of the hype. It's you know, it's a Submariner. It's the Hulk. It has a cool nickname, you know, it's loud and recognizable. It's the only green sub. And there's a lot of people who literally buy it because they like the hype, they like how much it's appreciated in value. No one has ever once been like, oh, you bought this because of the hype. Sure. They're, they're more like, why did you buy the, you could have bought any color, you know? And, but so it's, it's no one is thinking I bought this for anything other than a very personal sure. decision. Um, As so watches I, should be. Well, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, you know, that th my biggest problem with like a steel Royal Oak is like, there's no way to wear that watch and have people assume it's like a very, very personal choice that you made. Right. People right. assume, oh, hype beast, you're wearing it because it's the you know 16202 cool. yeah, yeah. or whatever. So, mm -hmm. and I actually, I'm on the other side. I, I take some points away for that from this watch. I remember when it came out, and I, you know, I loved it then. I mean, again, I'm just, I love green's my thing. I like green, right? Um, and it wasn't the popular, the the, the popular Submariner. People were kind of like. Eh, it's kind of nice. I mean, I'll take the black, right? But the, the green ones, it's different, you know? And then recently it's been more hyped, it's been more popular, and I, I actually don't like that about watches. I don't like when that happens because I feel like it's, like you said, it's it, it, there's so many uh, purchase choices that aren't really a genuine taste and thing. They're, they're mm. buying it because of the hype or the status or whatever. And you know, if that's your goal, then great. I mean, it, it happens all the time, but for me, I. I take a few points away because I really want that pure, like I love it for the watch and not for the market or anything else. Yeah, if you owned a Hulk in 2010, like I gotta tip my hat off to you because that would, I knew people who bought the Hulk because they couldn't get a black one. Sure, exactly. Immediately. Ah. You know, they wanted a sub, they kind of liked both, uh, the black one, and keep in mind 2010 that you could get a sub a lot easier than today, but right. they literally got that one or they got a pre-owned because it was less than retail. Yes, exactly. So like if you bought, like there's almost a meme where it's just like, like guy gets out of a time machine. What year are we in? Wait, hold on. How much is that green Samaritan? Oh, you yeah, the other one. You know what I mean? And yeah, it's like, absolutely. It was such of the era. No one wanted the green sub. Yeah. And then, you know, now it's obviously a big thing. So, but it I is. did like it when it was. Yeah, someone made yeah. that decision because it was a very personal one. It wasn't. It was more expensive than the black one. Yeah, it was like oh, easier like to green. get. You like yeah. this watch? It's not like oh, you got it because this is going to be the cool one or this is going to yeah. be you know, the valuable one. Well, staying in the lane of green watches, I kind of like mentioned it earlier that not all Rolex greens are the same. I mean, all colorings tend to vary, but we have a few other watches that we were discussing ahead of the debate conversation. You want to grab a few? Some I of mean, these I wanted to choose, but I honestly would feel like it was no, not an honest genuine, decision if it wasn't the one I actually bought. Yeah, yeah, being genuine is important. So we have a few of just what we have currently available. I mean, come on, so, we've talked about about the quintessential, like current, very hyped up green watch. This green has no true similarities to your Hulk at all. Dark green with red yours. accents, as Justin says, it's the perfect watch for Christmas. It is. It is. I, it is. I, and it's I, a I want it just to wear watch. all December yes. and then put away. Um, yeah, like so we, we're talking about green, and the, mm -hmm. this is a hard choice. There's a lot of green ones I like. Let's talk about some of these other. Close choices. Okay, that mint dial. Uh, close this, choices. This I'm sorry. Watch. I'm sorry. Close choices. This is like the one you get when you can't get this one. Like, I, yeah. I, I agree. love that green. This okay. is like also, me showing up to the job interview and then me on the first green. day of work. That like, green yeah, is this has no fantastic. personality yeah. compared yeah. to yeah. the palm dial. Okay, the what about Here, I'll speak that? This but what to about be fair, that color is really dial? pretty. I'll, I'll with, keep this one. With the fluted dial. You know I love fluted. Okay. Especially on Jubilee. Yeah. So that's it. When I see green and Datejust, I want to see a pattern. I love the palm dial. Green fluted is cool. It's a really, really pretty shade of green, but it, I, I I'm, I want to see it a little bit more blown out. Yeah. Or if you do get the flat one, get it on a Jubilee bracelet with the with the mm -hmm. fluted bezel. Yeah. It'll jazz it up a little bit more. But it's a pretty shade, not for me. We don't have one here, and this is a lot coming from me, seeing how I'm not inherently a gold guy yeah. is yeah. the 50th anniversary green GMT. dial solid gold GMT. Oh, That's oh, my, man. that would have been, You yeah. did content on that watch and legitimately learning about its configuration and sort of purpose behind it made me fall in love with that watch more, but it is so beautiful and again, unique. 
yeah. you're not seeing so many iterations on it, which I think allows it to be special. Well, right? and if I want a green and gold watch, that that's more green and gold than, oh, yeah. than that's the Daytona. The green, green and gold. gold, here you yeah. go. Yeah, and if you didn't want a sports watch version of that, this, <laughs> I love this one, right. this gloss green dial. Yeah, even oh, yeah. the so olive the, the, green. This one I think is such a and great, we're talking about colors, that rose gold with the green is just a gorgeous watch. And two, look, both Date 840s, Roman dials, very, very different executions, yeah. different shades of green, different metals, different yeah. bezels, oh, yeah. everything about it is different. We have this in uh, white gold right now too, and even those two side by side, it's like completely different. They just like, it pulls out different tones completely, especially yeah. when you're in the light and wherever, you know, you're st however you're styling it, it just, it, it, it lends differently so much so. Well, and look here, we're both talking about Day Day 40s. The buyer of one of these is not the buyer for another. Sure. Valid. And if you own both, more power to you. But, right. uh, you know, they're so different and at the same time we're talking about a symmetrical model. Right. What do you guys think of the Green OP? Okay, we don't have one here, but one I think is fantastic and I think people are gonna disagree with me on this is the previous version of that. It's the green OP oh. with the, the little orange 34 markers. 34 millimeters, yeah, it, it was not available in the larger sizes. So, oh, that but thing. that watch is You so, both have loved that watch forever. That whole ever. series, like I even like the, the gray. grape dial one and the blue and green I think is, but that green one is the best and oh Stand out. man that is a good watch. Yeah, yeah, it is. The sizing, the configuration of it all, yeah, that was awesome. It is awesome. 34, but those That's that previous Gen yeah. six digit 34 watches were pretty chunky. So it did. It, yeah. I, yeah, I really like that one. That one's a sleeper. Yeah, it's it, a no yeah. one no one mm -hmm. thinks of that yeah. one. Mm -hmm. You um, love the Stella. We talked about I like about the, the Stella. Stella, Stella. Cause it's such a different shade of green. Like it oh, is. Like talk about these are very different, but they're close. all a little bit mature. Even this one, which yes. is like very Evolved. bright. And then you look at the Stella and you're like, what like Crayola box did this fall <laughs> out of? It is so different. But it's such a like time period specific color. Do you know yes, what I'm saying? Yes, no, hundred percent. And the fact that it's in like a vintage gold watch yeah, makes it even yeah, cooler. Yeah. yeah. You yeah, throw the diamond hour really, really markers good. on that one. Oh baby. But we talk about like a different purchase. I can oh, afford we, this. I can't sell true, all the organs in my body. The Speaking Stella. of different colors, we talk about the Daytona Beach Daytona, yeah. right? That's another one. That green is nowhere near any no. of this green. Personally, I, I think I like the, the shade a little bit less, but I love the watch as a whole for yeah. what it is. And yeah. then yeah, we get into like the green materials, like that that one where right. it's it that came from the stone, bloodstone, malachite. We yeah. get into these green stone yeah. dials where you're turning to nature for the green shade right. at yes. that point, rather than like this kind of you know, Rolex choosing a specific sure. color. And those are really interesting. You get Malachite, you get 15 different shades of green in yes, the striations. Yeah. 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 The striations alone will really lend yeah. that differently too. That would, if I were actually playing into this, that would probably have been my vote on a like gold. The day day with the green style. Yeah, yeah. Those oh, are man. really nice too. One of my favorites yeah. for sure. But it was fun to see these. Lots of good green Rolex choices. But, but you notice these are all modern watches, all sapphire crystals, right. ceramic bezels. These are like all six digit watches on the table. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. now you can find five digits and even four digit green. Rolexes, yeah. but look at what we have available today and uh, 10, 15 years ago. We would, this would be a very short episode. We'd be discussing a few watches and that would be yeah. pretty much it. And yeah. it's, I mean, we're talking about green, but I feel like that's true for just color and style in general, right? Yeah. Like as time Blue. has been going on, like look at things like the celebration dial yeah. and wow. some of the colors they're bringing in. Outside from the Stellas, um, quite some time ago, Rolex hasn't really been that, you know, into the brighter this colors. This was and things. weird when it came out for a dial, and now we have like the celebration dial, the puzzle yeah. piece, day date. There's and a I like lot that. More weird I, stuff. I actually really enjoy that from Rolex. They're kind of being a little bit different, a little bit more edgy, pushing the boundaries a little bit more. They got and tired I of being called it. boring. We have yeah. people like us saying they're boring and yeah. expected for years. Years. And like the fact when this is like a, a novel thing, like, all right, we gotta go step it up. If right. green was us being adventurous, well, like yeah. you said, hold my beer. We're gonna go make yeah, emoji yeah. dials. <laughs> exactly. All in all, you guys, you you rolled out the red carpet, rolled out the green carpet, maybe I should say, on your picks. I really appreciate, you know, not only your personal preferences coming to play, but also taking in the historical significance and even really looking at the gamut, not just what's on our website, but what has been and what potentially will be, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So nonetheless, wonderful choices. Thank you for weighing in. And now it's your turn, Yeah, Al. we wanna know. What do you guys think of this conversation? Is there something that, look, we mentioned a lot of different watches at the end of the day. What have we missed? 
yes, you can go outside of Rolex if you really have to. That's not the point of the debate. But look, for the sake of green, let us hear if there's something else that really just like has a place in your heart. We'd love to hear um, and extend this conversation over to the comments. So weigh in. Let us know who you agreed with most. Even if it's me, I love it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, this is I, the series of Watch Debate is really fun. And I know yep. we've got some awesome um, topics to continue to debate about. So be sure to check back um, very soon for a fresh episode of Watch Debate. But until then, everybody, be well.